cop watch, policing the police every single day. Supreme Court rules that the U.S. government must get a warrant before accessing cell phone location data. Alex Emmons. June 22, 2018, 2.28 p.m. In a landmark privacy decision, the Supreme Court ruled 5 to 4 on Friday that police must get a warrant in order to obtain your cell phone's location data over an extended period of time. The decision is a major victory for privacy advocates, who have long argued that the law has failed to keep pace with the amount of intrusive data we voluntarily hand over to private companies. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the liberal justices on the court, declaring that even though the data is held by a third party, the government still needs a warrant to obtain it. We decline to grant the state unrestricted access to a wireless carrier's database of physical location information, said Roberts, writing for the majority. In light of the deeply revealing nature of cell site location information, its depth, breadth, and comprehensive reach, and the inescapable and automatic nature of its collection, the fact that such information is gathered by a third party does not make it any less deserving of Fourth Amendment protection. The court made the ruling in the case of Timothy Carpenter, who was convicted in 2013 of robbing Radio Shack and T-Mobile stores in Michigan and Ohio. In order to build their case, the FBI obtained 127 days' worth of location information for Carpenter's cell phone, almost 12,900 location points, which they used to place him at the scene of the robberies. Join our newsletter. Original reporting. Fearless journalism. Delivered to you. I'm in. The FBI obtained the data under the Stored Communications Act, which allowed them to acquire it directly from Carpenter's wireless provider without obtaining a warrant based on probable cause. According to disclosures by phone companies, police across the country make these types of requests tens of thousands of times per year. When the case was argued in November, the government's position was largely based on an old idea in Fourth Amendment law called the Third Party Doctrine. The Supreme Court expressed that idea in a famous ruling in 1979 that allowed police to obtain without a warrant a list of phone numbers dialed by an individual. The theory underlying that decision was that callers surrender their expectation of privacy when they hand that information over to a phone company. But Friday's ruling suggests that that opinion doesn't apply to cell phone location information, which the court considers more intrusive. The government's position fails to contend with the seismic shifts in digital technology that made possible the tracking of not only Carpenter's location but also everyone else's, not for a short period but for years and years, wrote Chief Justice Roberts. Friday's decision was made on narrow grounds, and the court did not examine potential implications for other technologies, like surveillance cameras, facial recognition technology, or other types of phone or internet data. The court also declined to rule on whether obtaining real-time location data from a cell phone qualified as a search under the Fourth Amendment, and left open the possibility that the government could access less than seven days' worth of location information without a warrant. Jake Leparuk, senior counsel at the Project on Government Oversight, said that the decision was a massive step forward, but expressed disappointment that the court did not address the possibility of real-time tracking. By refusing to make this obvious extension of its ruling, the court has prolonged this fight for years, and it left us unprotected from extremely invasive tools like stingrays that should clearly require a warrant, Leparuk told The Intercept in an email. The ACLU hailed the decision, saying it would open the door to updating privacy law for a range of technologies. This is a groundbreaking victory for Americans' privacy rights in the digital age, ACLU attorney Nathan Wessler who argued the case in November, said in a statement. The Supreme Court has given privacy law an update that it has badly needed for many years, finally bringing it in line with the realities of modern life. The government can no longer claim that the mere act of using technology eliminates the Fourth Amendment's protections. Top photo, cherry blossoms frame the U.S. Supreme Court building on April 10, 2018.
So we have a new Supreme Court decision. This time, the Supreme Court decided that police need search warrants in order to take information from a criminal suspect's cell phone. Ilya Shapiro joins me now from the Supreme Court. He's a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Uh, Ilya, explain what the implications are and why the court came to this conclusion. Well, the court explicitly says that this is a narrow opinion, meaning uh, limited to cell site location data only, uh, not any other future kind of technologies or any applications in the national security sphere, uh, just that the police do need a warrant uh, to get information from Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, whoever your cell phone uh, provider is, uh, to get that data about where you've been, which towers you're, you're pinging off of, based on kind of a, a complicated collection of factors, your interest in the privacy of your data that you can't really disconnect from the network in the modern world without turning your phone off or taking the battery out. So this is, uh, you do have uh, some expectation of privacy uh, uh, in that sense. Um, but again, this is a, a big deal for police work in terms of locating that cell site data, but doesn't have broader application on uh, other types of technology or uses uh, outside of the law enforcement realm. So, so Ilya, over sorry. the past few years, sorry Vlad, over the past few years, the courts have been grappling with particularly how to deal with the information that's on a cell phone. Once upon a time, when there are no cell phones, Vlad, you know, you got pulled over and maybe the officer might search through your bag mm -hmm. if they had a reason and they right. might find a piece of paper. But now with cell phones, you need a password, it's a way more complicated, but there's also a lot more information that law enforcement can, can get. Yeah, they're trying to analogize to the Fourth Amendment's text, which protects uh, people, houses, uh, personal effects. Uh, and so if you have your entire photo album stored on your phone effectively, as long, uh, along with your bank records and your correspondence, I mean, that's more than rifling through somebody's house. So it raises all sorts of concerns of property, uh, privacy and property, although some of the dissenting justices here, and there were four separate dissents, uh, uh, looking at different aspects of this case, we're disputing whether really a property interest was involved here. So kind of complicated in terms of the legal doctrine uh, involved, but the majority opinion is very straightforward. There's 120 pages that I haven't gotten through altogether of all the different writings, but the majority is only 20 pages, like I said, because it's limited to effectively the facts of the case, meaning cell site location data. So the court does try to tread lightly and not make rulings that five years, 10 years down the line will look silly or simply can't be applied in light of new technology, but they're grappling with how do you, how do you deal with the Constitution's fundamental protections uh, for your individual uh, property and effects and your, and your person, your privacy uh, in the digital age when data might be dispersed and not physically on you at any one time. You, you know, it's an interesting question, uh, Ilya, because uh, the case that was being decided here had to do with a young man, with a man, Timothy Carpenter, who was ultimately arrested and convicted of several armed robberies, the police were able to pin him to the crime because they used some of those um, location cell phone data uh, uh, trackers, I guess, mm -hmm. the yeah. GPS data in the phone that uh, had him at the location of where he had committed or where allegedly he had committed those robberies. And now the court is saying that that's, um, that was an invasion, I guess, of his privacy. And it does sort of make, well, you know, on one hand, you want to protect everybody's individual privacy. On the other hand, the question becomes, would the police have been able to solve the case without that data? Mm -hmm. And does that mean more people will be able to escape the long arm of the law if the, um, if the court ruling holds? Yeah. Well, a lot of our constitutional protections allow people to escape the law on a quote-unquote technicality. A lot of, uh, you know, even outside the criminal realm, uh, people are talking about how the First Amendment uh, allows protections for speech that people might not like or find mm -hmm. offensive or dangerous, causes harm of various kinds. Uh, but that's not the standard that, that we apply. We, we like our liberties and uh, we need those protections uh, uh, because we don't want uh, police to be able to just search anyone anytime for any reason. In this particular case, there was a confession. There was some other kinds of evidence. They didn't even try to apply for a warrant. There's going to be cases where the police might have probable cause, which is what you need uh, for a warrant. And this just makes sure that they go ahead and do that rather than just saying, well, this is good enough for government work and we're just going to go ahead and search. At the end of the day, the court does not change two very important doctrines. First, the third party doctrine, that is, if you throw something out or give it to a different, to another individual, 
then you no longer have an interest in it, whether you call that privacy or property. So if you leave your trash out by the curb, police can search that without a warrant. That doesn't change. And whatever the, the, the modern technological equivalent of that doesn't change. What effectively they're saying here is when you're pinging off this data and constantly on the network and you know leaving crumbs and cookies and what have you about where you are uh, online, that's not necessarily giving that information to a third party. Each separate uh, type of technology will have to be uh, evaluated by itself. Now, if you submit or email something to someone or, or submit some document somewhere, clearly that you're sending to a third party. But just walking around and your phone being active and pinging off towers, they're saying that's closer to being still uh, part of you, still within your property or privacy interest. That is so fascinating. Really, interesting. really, really interesting. Um, Ilya, what else is going on in terms of the courts? What else are we looking forward to here? Right, so we now have six cases left. Forward to Police use who may want to retaliate against him physically. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch, and I just wanted you to know that uh, I am using this stuff under fair use. And uh, also, uh, remember to like and subscribe this channel. Uh, also, too, uh, keep in mind I do not make any money on YouTube. Uh, this is uh, five hours work a day, uh, you know, fighting for freedom. And uh, I do, I, you can donate with PayPal and Patreon. Uh, I just want you to think about this. If everybody gives uh, to PayPal and Patreon, Patreon is every month. Actually, PayPal you can do every month. I have 12,000 subscribers. If everybody gives, I can uh, quit my regular job and go full-time investigations on Charlotte County and possibly even more and beyond. So just keep that in mind. If everybody helps out, I can go full-time doing this. Thanks.